education. That's what we're going to talk about in the next few videos that I put up here. I think that's very important, and I promised to do it when I started uh, my channel. It seems sometimes that other people have magic. They're able to go out there willy-nilly and come back with hands full of nuggets, and uh, big nuggets. And it seems like, for some reason, they're able to go out and do that, and you can't, no matter how hard you try. And a lot of it's got to do with location, my friends. Um, it's really difficult to get out into these new areas and to find areas that haven't been pounded, but they're out there. And you'll see guys on YouTube say, well, all the gold's gone, it's, not, it's all different now, it's worse now, this, that, and the other thing. It's really not true. It's not as easy now, but there's still plenty of gold out there to be found. I know because I find it on a regular basis. How do I do that? Education. Like I said at the beginning here, um, one of the best things a person can do is join a club. By joining a club... You're new to all this, you don't know anything about gold prospecting, except people are doing it and finding gold, right? So you join this club. They have claims that are active, and you can go out there and actually find gold on these claims. And it's a lot of fun. And clubs are there for your education. No one ever says you're going to get rich on a gold claim that's owned by a club. In a lot of cases, a lot of people hunt those claims. They find some nice stuff, but... Hitting a pocket where you get yeah, a small handful of nuggets or something like that. I shouldn't call it getting rich. Um, finding a good amount of gold. We'll call it that. And getting into a place like that, you have to learn how to get to that place. And what I mean is, when you walk out on a club claim for the first time, other people are there. You go out and you dig a little gold. Maybe find a nugget with your metal detector. Have a blast. Go home. But by the end of the day, did you learn why that gold was there? Where the gold came from? How they worked that area previously? Believe it or not, there are books out there that you can buy for less than $20 each that will tell you the history of whatever state you happen to be in. We're going to use Arizona here because that's where I am. Okay, so I'm on a GPAA claim out at San Domingo Placer area here in Arizona. Where did the gold come from? How big was the gold? Are there nuggets here? Who mined it? When was it mined? When was it discovered? Believe it or not, all that information is available to you online free, or you can buy the book for less than 20 bucks. One of these books is called uh, Arizona's Gold Placers and Placering by Eldred Wilson. And this is a book compiled of uh, Arizona Bureau of Mines information, and it's ge all the geology, mineralogy, everything that they, that they did in the old days is in this book for listed placer areas. Okay, there's another one called Placer Deposits of Arizona by Maureen Johnson. This book comes with a neat little map. Let's see, here's a map. If you notice, on this map, I don't know if you can see them, but there's little yellow dots, some big yellow dots, in different parts of the state. What those yellow dots are is economically important placer deposits to the government. Well, to the people working them, too. They found the gold. But economically important. What does that mean? Economically important means that that placer area produced $5,000 or more in gold when that book was written or previous to the book being written. That's at $20 an ounce or less, between 18 and 20 bucks. That's a lot of gold. Okay, the thing that aren't marked on that map is areas that didn't produce those amounts of gold. See where this is going, don't you? That's what I look for. All right? I will go to these popular areas. Um, I've done well at some of them. But I do a lot of what's called fringe hunting. And by that I mean I take this map that I just showed you. That shows placer deposits 
for the state of Arizona, they're economically important. I take one of these. This is a geological map. A geological map of the state of Arizona. Okay, if you'll notice something about this map, it's very colorful. Okay, and I know some of you are thinking right now, geez, I've got to be a geologist to do this. No, you don't. Um, believe it or not, by these being colored for the different minerals and the different types of formations, it makes it very easy for you to overlay this map over this map and find noticeable areas that carry the same type of rock formations by just looking at the color. And seeing these areas on the outside areas of these plaster spots that are well known, and a fellow gets out in there, and that can be a real surprise when you get in a wash out there that can produce gold that other people pass by just because it hasn't been listed. It hasn't been listed. Okay? So, the clues that will take you to the right formations in the rocks, and this is all in layman's terms because believe it or not, I, I really don't have much education in geology. I learned enough geology to find gold. And along with that came over the years... Um, I learned more about rocks. I became interested in them. And I learned about, a lot about the rocks. But the key is, is carry good books with you that show different rock types. So when you're reading in these other books about gold being in Precambrian granite or schist or rocks like this, instead of trying to guess what those rocks are, you can actually look them up in the book. Be standing there in this placer area and look for signs of the same rock that the book talked about that the gold was found in. It's not rocket science, but it is a lot of work. And I look in places everywhere from libraries, old articles online, maps, and I'll spend hours searching. Um, other books. 1,000 Old Arizona Mines. Okay? Old book. But it tells you the mines in there pay no attention to the railroad paper. Okay, but anyway, it tells you where plast uh, hard rock mines were in the state, what the hard rock mines produced, how much they produced, and I use this very book. Yep, highlighted. I use this very book to go out and find free milling hard rock gold. Free milling means that there was gold in the rock that you can see with the naked eye. Sometimes a lot of gold. Well, it just makes sense that below these mines there would be plaster deposits or are associated with them, or even some of the hard rock material is available to somebody willing to go out there, put in the time, and hunt for it. I'm willing to do that. Now, it's not the same as going out into a little area like out here at San Domingo by me that's been hammered and hammered and hammered again. Every now and then I get a nice nugget out there. But you have to get out in the fringes to get into the patches. And what I mean by a patch, that's an area you walk up a wash, you dig 15 nuggets in one day, or you walk up a little hillside, and same results. Um, arming yourself with the knowledge to know what you're looking at when you're out there is the main thing. Okay, and back to being in a club claim. That was one of the first things I did, join a club. And I'll never forget the first time I checked out the claim I wanted to go to, because somebody else had said there was good gold there. So I packed up the dog, the truck, all my camping gear, and I went flying out there, hopped out of my truck and looked around and had no idea where to start. None. It just all looked the same to me out there. And I knew about washes and stuff like that, um, but I didn't know exactly what I was looking for. And I knew that after a couple times of going through that. I knew that was my problem. I wasn't educated. So I started educating myself. Back when I started out of this in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, there was nobody out there that wanted to help anybody else learn how to find gold. I mean, they were finding a lot of gold, and they didn't want anybody else. And gold's notorious for uh, people being a little bit greedy and not wanting to share. But anyway, I educated myself. I digested everything I could find. And it still took me over a year to find my first nugget with a metal detector. I did well dry washing. I did okay with the wet methods. 
but I wanted more. I wanted chunks. I wanted to get my gold in chunks like the guys were doing the expensive metal detectors. So I saved up and bought one. And I'd go out, I'd dig nails, tin, pieces of aluminum, trash, you name it. And even the trash can give clues. I'll go into that later. But I didn't find any nuggets. And I get frustrated very quickly. Go back, fire up my keen dry washer, boop, 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 and pump out some gold. Now I see a little gold in the pan. That was great. But one day, I came across a book by a fellow named Jim Strait, who has become a very dear friend to me. And uh, in Jim's book called The Nugget Shooter's Bible, Follow the Dry Washers, I learned more than I had learned in a total year of stomping around out there, beating my head on rocks and stuff, not knowing what I was doing. Right away, I started buying the literature that was suggested. I started learning. And most of all, I started looking for dry wash uh, evidence. I still do that today. That's one of the quickest ways in an area in the desert here to know that they were out there getting gold. Some places weren't dry washed, and I found an awful lot of gold. But a lot of places, probably well over half, have been hammered by the old timers. But you've got to remember something. They couldn't work every hillside, every bench, every little, every little wash, unless it paid well. These guys were working for food. They were out there working every day trying to make enough money so they could eat beans. And a lot of them didn't. And a lot of them failed. And... Uh, as a result of that, they would work the richest areas and move on. Okay? Now think about a dry washer for a minute. If you've never seen one, look them up. You've got a gizmo that either puffs air or blows air. And in doing that, you've got a grizzly on the top that runs down like this, and you've got the riffle tray running down like this. Well, the shovel, the material up here, the bigger stuff rolls off. And the other stuff processed through the bottom. Most placer areas was a lot more fine gold than big gold. And most dry washers on the grizzly, which is the one that separates the bigger rocks, the holes are no bigger than a half inch. Some three-eighths. Think about that for a minute. Okay, so you're in an area, hmm, and it's got a lot of half-ounce nuggets that were found and one-ounce nuggets. But it also means that those coarse dry washer piles have a lot of half-ounce nuggets and one-ounce nuggets, quarter-ounce nuggets. Anything that wouldn't fit through that riffle, or through that grizzly, down into the tailings piles. That was some of the first places I started looking. And Jim Strait also said, oh, I should check my own tailings piles. So after I read his book, I still went through a, a period of <laughs> digging trash and getting frustrated and going to dry washing. Well, lo and behold, one day I'm dry washing down there, and uh, it was a pretty good spot. And I got done for the day. And my pile was right there, and my dry washer, and my battery. I had a keen puffer. And my buckets and my tools. So I sat there and loaded everything up, put it in the truck, walked by these tailings piles that I just freshly made. And uh, this time, I followed Jim's advice after I loaded everything up and came down with my metal detector. I went over the top of that first header pile and got a screaming signal right on top. I looked down, and I could see the nugget. It was about a penny weight. Nice nugget. About the size of your thumbnail. Maybe, you know, flat. I couldn't believe it. I finally found a nugget with my metal detector. But the worst part was it was in my own tailings pile. How many had I walked away from? So I look around me, and I'm out, out here at San Domingo. And this is in early 90s. And I looked around me. There's tailings piles everywhere. So I started hunting tailings piles. And ever since then, I found nugget hunting to be, a, be what I want to do. Every tailings pile at San Domingo back in the early days had gold in it. I, maybe not every one, but almost every one I hunted. Had a piece of, to of gold in it, or a specimen, or something that rolled off. Well, the old timers knew that stuff was rolling off those piles, off those headers. But they were finding so much fine gold, that'd be the same as I, I said to you, okay, I'm going to put you in this wash, you're going to get 10 ounces of gold a day. Woohoo! But you got to throw back three ounces every day. So that means I want to go home at seven, right? 
Yeah, that's what that means. You look at me like I'm nuts and say, okay, you go eat your seven ounces and uh, go home every day after throwing back your three from your ten. The old timers knew that's what was happening. They knew they were losing gold off the top. They knew they were losing gold out of the banks and stuff. They didn't care. These guys had to eat. Okay, they were finding so much fine gold, you know, uh, small pickers and down that it didn't matter to them that they were missing some of those bigger nuggets. And they diligently watched those header piles and spread a lot of them out and looking for bigger pieces that might have slidden through. But they were still there. And that was one of the first areas that I really became successful in nugget hunting is learning to follow the dry washers with advice from my buddy Jim Strait. And by having books that you can download free with a Google search, just do a Google search for Arizona Gold Plasters and Plastering. You'll find a free download, and each one of these books gives you detailed information of each area that you're wanting to hunt. Okay? And this is just the introductory to the education thing coming up. i got a whole pile of books here, and i got more books here. I've got maps on the wall. I'm going to go into this stuff over several videos, because it's just too much to do all at once, you fall asleep trying to listen to it. But I'm going to do it over several videos, and uh, I'm going to teach you, or try to teach you, how to locate gold before you even set foot to the ground. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. We started out in the first part of this, and I'd like you to download those books I described, or at least uh, Get them online and, and look at them a little bit so you can understand when we go into the next part of this what I'm talking about. And if you're going to stick with this little series on the education, then I will give you downloads to do as we move along. But for right now, download the uh, Arizona Gold Plasters and Plastering from the Bureau of Mines. Um, and also maybe a geological map of the state of Arizona and a plaster deposit map of the state of Arizona. And I'll see you all in a little bit.